All right, welcome back. So in the first video, I showed you how uh, we downloaded this data from the Seattle Fremont Bridge and did some initial visualization. Um, in this video, I want to dive a little bit deeper into this visualization and take a look at some, uh, some features of the data. And after that, we'll start looking into how to make this analysis reproducible using the, the tools provided by Jupyter and by Python. So um, one thing I like to start with is uh, changing the style of the plots a little bit. I don't like the default matplotlib style. So if we import matplotlib.pyplot as plt, we can um, use the style module, plt.style.use, and say we want to use Seaborn style. And then if we, uh, if we redo this plot up here, um, we can see that the, the style is a little bit better. I like this gray background with the grid lines and, and the different colors and things like that. The other thing is this, uh, this legend is a little bit verbose. So what I'm going to do is say data.columns equals west comma east, just to make it a little bit, little bit shorter. And then we have a, a nicer visualization there. Now, um, one thing you might want to do is see if there's any sort of annual trend in the number of riders, any sort of annual growth or decline in ridership. And one way we can do that, we can copy this, this right here. And what we can do is a, a rolling window. So let's, let's resample daily and then say rolling 365. So we want to do a rolling sum of over 365 days of all the data. And what comes out there is kind of the annual trend. Each of these points is the sum of rides in the previous 365 days. And you see something interesting. The, the west, on the west side, things got uh, increased until early 2015 and sort of decreased after that. Now these access limits are a little bit um, suspect because they don't go all the way to zero. So it might be um, better if we can do, if we can set the YLIM from zero to none just tells you to use the current maximum. Um, and I think that'll give us a little better idea of what's going on. You know, the, the change is not as dramatic, but there is some change. But there seems to be an offset here between the west sidewalk and the east sidewalk. So um, another thing we can do is uh, we can say data total equals data west plus data east. So we'll just add a new column to the data, and then we, we can plot that. So you can see that somehow this, this east side and west side of the, of the bridge have kind of um, flipped a little bit, and the, the trends are reversed so that the, the total counts of bike or, bikes across the bridge hover right around 1 million... So that one million per year, or something like that, and it's been pretty consistent for the past few years, plus or minus a few percent, maybe. Um, so that's interesting. Uh, another thing that's uh, that we can do that's pretty cool is we can um, take a look at the trend within individual days. So I'm going to take a look at a group by here, and um, let's let's group by the the time of day, and take the mean, and then plot it to see what that looks like. So this is the, um, over uh, each time of day throughout the year, we, um, through, through all the days, we average the, the number of crossings at each time of day, and we see some interesting patterns. First, the eastbound sidewalk seems to peak in the afternoon, and the westbound sidewalk peaks in the morning. And these two peaks here are kind of indicative of a commute pattern, right? You have people going into the city, into the city on the westbound on on the west sidewalk in the morning and out of the city on the east sidewalk in the afternoon, generally. Now the, this average is nice, but it would also be nice to kind of see the the whole data set in this way. And one way we can do that is with something called a pivot table. So let's uh, make a pivoted data set and do data dot pivot table, and we're going to want the total counts, and we want the index to be data dot index dot time as we did before. But the columns here, um, to, we want them to be data.index.date. And um, if, we, if we look at just the first uh, five by five block of this uh, pivoted data, we can see what we've done. We now have a two-dimensional data frame where each column is a day in the data set. And each row corresponds to an hour during that day. So let, let's take a look at that, um, that data. If we plot it, we, want, we don't want a legend, so we're going to say legend equals false and um, take a look at what comes out. 
And what, what we see here is if, if I've done this correctly, it takes a little while because there are a lot of, lot of lines to draw. But um, what we'll see here is that we have a line now for each day of the year, um, or each day in the four years. And it's, it's maybe a little bit hard to see. So let's try doing alpha equals 0 0.01. This is the, the transparency. So we're going to plot a whole bunch of transparent lines on top of each other to get an idea of how the trend in crossings over the day changes throughout this four-year period. And now you can see that there's this, there's a, a bunch of days that have this kind of commute, this, this bimodal commute pattern, but there are also a bunch of days that don't have a commute pattern. They kind of go and peak somewhere midday and then um, go down during the rest of the day. And I think the, the best hypothesis here is that these um, commute days would be weekdays and these uh, broad usage days would be weekends or holidays. So we can take a more detailed look at that later, but um, I just wanted to show you some of the, the stuff that you can do with this data. Now in the next video, we'll start looking into how to take this analysis here that we've done, these lines of code, and package it up in a way that we know is reproducible and that we can validate um, is working correctly. So thanks for, thanks for watching.